de Global Latin Factor Podcast. Welcome, 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 welcome to the Global Latin Factor Podcast. The Global Latin Factor Podcast where we bring you everything between, in between, we're talking about food, culture, people, music, everything that the Latin community, a Latino, has contributed to the world. This is what the podcast is all about. If you have uh, any questions, concerns, emails you want to ask, any suggestions, you can always reach out to the Global Latin Factor podcast on pretty much every single outlet. And again, we are going to do our best to do every research possible on everything that we have contributed as a Latino to the world, not just to the United States, but to the entire world. That's the reason why it's called the Global Latin Factor podcast. All right, so today's episode, we're going to talk about music and how influential our sounds can be and how one moment can become something huge, something that you can't even possibly imagine, especially from the artists where they did not know there will be something as big as this. We're going to talk about the song that broke all kinds of Guinness records and everything in between, and I'm going to tell you all the categories he broke and this some of the information I, I looked up is most likely outdated because the song still continues to be played all over the world we talking about Despacito. Despacito translation will be slowly so in 2015 Luis Fonsi his Puerto Rican had a vision all he thought about woke up one morning and had this harmony this Despacito, that's all he had. And then something, 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 Puerto Rico. He took that to the studios because he made sure he, want, he didn't want to forget. He captured that and it took him two years in J January 12 of 2017. The song was released called Despacito. And it was, again, Luis Fonsi featuring Daddy Yankee. It was uh, written also by Panamanian singer Erica Ender and produced by two Colombian producers, Mauricio Rengifo and Andres Torres. They're both Colombian. And, of course, we also, he's not Latino, but, again, he, he knew when something was big and he had to be part of it. We're talking about Justin Bieber, and uh, they made the song happen. It's, this song has been, I know if you were 2017, you, you couldn't escape that song. It was all over the place. Every single country just about was playing this song. There's no denying it. Get, funny story that Justin Bieber was actually in uh, Colombia at a club. He was uh, partying up in Colombia a few months after the song was released, and he heard the song playing, and I, I got to be part of this. So his camp is the one that reached out to Fonsi's camp. It's like, hey, I got I want to be part of this. And it was, it was real cool that he took the time because they send the session and he sent, they send everything and the lyrics included. And they thought that he was just going to go ahead and, you know, just do it in English. And it was cool. However, Mr. Bieber took the time to do the Spanish part. He did the Spanish, and, you know, as somebody that speaks Spanish, that pronunciation was pretty good. You know, it sounded really nice the way he did it. And, you know, he just gave it his own different vibe and just kept pushing the song forward. The, the video itself, if you leave it or not, is not massive production, you know. It's just real. It just looked like people were having fun. 14 hours it took to make that song. It was filmed in La Perla, a neighborhood in old San Juan, Puerto Rico. And also at a local bar, La Factoria, small little studio in Miami, by the director Carlos Perez, 14 hours. And if you ever watch the video, it just gives you this nice little vibe. If you've never been to Puerto Rico, it just kind of takes you there. You see the water, you see the waves, you see the, the graffiti, the neighborhood. It feels real like, you know, like us Mexicanos be like, like in, a, in your barrio, just chilling, vibing. Just want to, you know, and if you ever been to the ocean, man, it's, it's real, real calm, peaceful, and just the, the, the air just feels different. 14 hours, in, it took him to go ahead and take care of this beautiful, beautiful song. Again, it was also, uh, it received a Latin Grammy uh, for the record of the year, Best Urban F Fusion. 
what can I say about this song, man? It's just 47 countries he reached, top 10 on six of them. That's one of the, uh, it became the song primarily in Spanish, the top Billboard 100 since La Macarena in 1996. You remember La Macarena? I know you remember La Macarena. But anyways, this song was a whole lot more massive than that. It did bigger numbers. Set th The last time, because I, I watched the video a few times, just to remember everything, just check it out and just see what the song was about, analyze everything that I could, or how, you know, the... Uh, everything just as far as like just a reminder of how the video was and it just really does put you in a nice little mood and you know just can't help it but to vibe and uh it's just it's just a magnificent piece of art and to think of, to think that it took him two years right after he just thought all he had is a little harmony and like this little just uh -huh -huh, and then before you know it he just uh created this massive crazy song and uh if you recognize the main star of the um of the video is uh miss universe in 2016 miss puerto rico that was her on the video yeah they got her involved in the video and it was just a beautiful beautiful scenery again as i mentioned they do the drone with the ocean and they just having fun and dancing who doesn't want to be in the club and uh just enjoy yourself and i did want to go to because i know there's a lot of translations this and that but i did want to go to some of the uh lyrics because i feel like some of these lyrics are are just uh it's just po po poetic just you know, the wordplay the the way that he just referenced certain things you'd be like what are you serious like huh and i know that like some people say you know, it was just extra super sexy and like I, I don't i think it was very classy to me at the end of the day i really think that some of the lyrics are really nicely put and the way that it was flowing and uh you know just the way that you know somebody wants to link up with another person of the opposite sex or whatever whatever your flow is and uh you know just vibe and you have a connection seven billion seven billion views in youtube last time i checked when i was checking the videos and the numbers seven billion views Bill billion billions that's crazy that is just insane numbers all right let's go ahead and get into the lyrics a little bit because i really i really like some of the lyrics it said he i'm a, a little bit of a translation but you know it just mostly just go over what he said so i know that it starts off with uh si sabes que ya tengo un rato mirante like you know that it's been some time you've been looking at me and i'll be looking at you too and i want to dance with you i see your 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 eyes your your look is calling me and then it talks about how you're uh, you're the magnet you're the magnet and i'm the metal you're the magnet and i'm the metal <laughs> that is nice Think about it. Have you ever, if you're talking to, to you know, somebody you're attracted to, have you ever think about just saying something like that? Like, you know, it's only a, like you're the magnet and I'm the metal. You can't, we can't keep each other apart from you even if you wanted to. That's just, you know. And he talks about his, his pulse accelerate, just thinking about how close he can get to, to the other person. And uh, it's just, it's just awesome that uh, the way that they, that Fonsi and, and Erica put those lyrics together. And uh, the other part was uh, that I wanted to see is like he, he talks about how he uh, he wants to say something to her ears. So whenever she's not around, that he can still remember her. That's crazy. I'm just saying. And uh, everything in regards to the lyrics is just beautifully put. One of the other ones that I liked a lot is that, uh, you know, imagine doing things in the beach and then the waves be like, oh, my God. Like the waves, I like see what you're doing in the beach, and you're like, oh my God. You know what I mean? That's just, that's, that's really nice they put. So they did go through a little bit of a dark time in the, in the song. They were sued at a one point in time for another gentleman that created a song, pretty much the same name, but with an S. That's Pasito with an S at the end. Sued him because, you know, he felt for whatever reason that the song was pretty close to his. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. A U.S. District Judge Catherine Williams decided that in August two, uh, 6 that the song was not close to the way that Despacito was. And shortly after that, the, the lawsuit was dismissed. And shortly after, the, eventually, they agreed to drop the actual lawsuit because they really find nothing that said that their song really, you know, that, that Luis Fonsi, the Daddy Yankee, the Elder, 
and the whole uni Universal crew, uh, you know, did any kind of uh, wrongdoing in stealing the song or stealing any kind of lyrics or anything like that. So some of the Guinness World Records that Despacito broke was most weeks and number one on Billboard Hot Latin Song Chart, most viewed video online, most liked video online, most views on YouTube, and that was back then when they only had it at about five million, five billion uh, views. Now we're talking about seven billion views. So most likely it broke another two records. First YouTube video to receive five billion again that was outdated. It's now at seven billion, and most viewed video online of all times. You know. So, again, some of the things that we just feel like for whatever reason, we have an idea. Because in 2015, he had an idea, right, of just something small. And he's like, you know what, I cannot forget this. I got to go ahead and get to the studio and record it because I want to make sure that I don't lose this, you know. And a lot of the times we go through live and certain things and ideas that we have, and we don't, we don't, we don't take no action on it. We don't do anything for it we just you know think about it and then that's it you know when we began the process of doing this podcast and again it's still a working process to to get it give it his, his identity give it give it his own thing give it make it his own his own vibe as far as what the show is going to be eventually i do have an idea but this process of the show and you can ask my graphic guy my camera guy here carlos it's been about three years maybe what three years four years so three back and forth we recreated the logo you know but the idea of the global latin factor for me was always there you know and eventually little by little I kept working it working it getting things done getting the logo getting the drops done and eventually you know it, it led me to go ahead and, and continue to work on it and and have it done here and again i'm not 100 percent of where i wanted to be yet because it's a fairly new podcast but it will get to where i want it to be of everything that i talked about at introduction of how much i want to talk about every latino that ever contributed anything from tortilla to this beautiful song right here that took all over the world and just about brought the spotlight of latin music into the mainstream you know people didn't even realize what they were singing again but it's still you cannot help the vibe of the, of the, the song and the influence and, and and it's a beautiful thing and again it's a it's a big step that you can you can take for yourself whenever you have an idea like this and even if it's just a small thing and it took him two years to actually finally put the song out two years later and then imagine what they have a big hit you know so again just take action on the little things on the little ideas that you do if you really feel passionate about it keep working at it keep working at it and eventually something's going to give you know Something it is is really gonna give. So if you never heard the song Despacito and you're not a Latino, or if you're a Latino for whatever reason you never heard of it, I mean I don't know what happened. Maybe you were in a coma, 2017. I hope you're okay and recover well. But <laughs> go check it out. It's a really good vibe song. Again, it's just uh, 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 lyrics, the way that they do it. I don't think they're too sexual. I just think they're just the right amount. I mean, you go out to the club and they play this song. I think mostly the, the main thing about this song that really took it to the next level is that it led you may like make you imagine certain things that could happen. Like who doesn't want to fantasize about going to the club and seeing whoever you're attracted to and all of a sudden y'all lock eyes and then all of a sudden you just involves into something else and then before you know it y'all have a, a beautiful time. Who doesn't want to experience and a lot of these things that the lyrics that they say is like you just when I was watching the video, it just makes me smile because it's like, oh man, that is so awesome. That is so dope. If you can, you can do something, if that can, something like that can happen to you, you know? I ain't gonna lie, something like that did happen to me with this song when it was playing. I'm not gonna discuss all the details, but I'm saying it felt really good. And anytime I hear this song, it, it puts a smile on my face because I know what he was trying to project in that song and I felt it. And anytime I, sit, I, I hear it, it makes me realize. So again, lesson, last final thought for this segment will be, man, take action on a few things. Even if it's a small idea, you feel it's a small idea, go ahead and, and a few steps at a time. And I guarantee you that one day, if you continue to work on it, even if it's just to write it down so you can remember it and go back to it. And then once you continue working on it, it could be two years, it could be 10 years, it could be even more. But at the end of the day, if you're real, 
If you're real passionate about it, if you wake up without anybody telling you to go work on this, eventually it's going to happen for you as far as contributing something to the world. And that's what we're going to bring also with the Latin factor because a lot of these people continue to work for a long time before they were given credit on the things they have done. And now we're talking about tacos. That's right, tacos. Tacos wouldn't be possible. Taco Tuesday would not be possible without tacos. All right, so doing all my research that I did in regards to tacos, there's a, first of all, just like anything, there's, there's a, not really a particular documented place where the tacos came from, but I did find, I did find about three different ideas, three different ideas as far as, or three different stories, variations of where the tacos came from. The first one is that the taco was actually created by miners like there's a there are miners like people mining for silver that f there was a at one point a time you know th whenever they took their their food as far as uh there were the people that were selling the, the the tortilla with food uh with whatever you put inside of it and they used to call it uh, tacos de minero minor tacos that's what it translates to and then that's where the origin the origination of the idea came from as far as the taco there's an and then the name so there's another another story as far as the name itself so the taco if you really look at it for me like for me a taco that's rolled up it's a flauta it's like but if you look at it, it kind of looks like a dynamite stick right so supposedly the spaniards had a word for whenever blowing up the mines it's, it's like a dynamite stick, and they it, they call that those tacos. So they use those to blow up uh, the mines, and because whenever you roll up the taco, whatever you have inside kind of looks like one of those. So uh, apparently that's where another word came from as far as calling them tacos. But to me, it does more like a flauta, but I kind of see the relationship to it. And then there's another one. Another story, and this one's a little bit more, how would I say? It goes way further back as far as the word itself. So supposedly the word comes from a Nahuatl. A Nahuatl is like a native Spanish, uh, like, no, like a, not a native Spanish, but a native language of Mexico, Nahuatl. And it's supposed to be Tlaco. Tlaco means fold in half, fold in the middle, which that's what a taco is, right? You fold in the middle and you put whatever it is. So a taco, if you don't know what a taco is, a taco comes from a corn tortilla. Now they uh, they even have flour, but mainly the main ingredient is a corn tortilla. Again, with the process of nixtamal, you get your tortilla. And then you can put just about anything in the middle. Get everything goes. Like for me, as I mentioned before, I, I'm mostly vegan. I eat, I have a an option nowadays to eat whatever I want to. I mostly maintain myself as a, in a vegan diet. But even then, for me, I can pretty much put just about anything that I can. I've done mushrooms, asparagus. I've done just beans with some type of, uh, you know, vegan cheese or whatever the case. But anything you can put. But some of the typical, some of the typical tacos that you can find and mostly in Mexico and even here in the United States. And again, there's, there's Japanese tacos. There's... Indian tacos, there's sweet tacos. Did you know there's sweet tacos? Like you can literally like buy a sweet taco. I don't even know what the, those are made of, but that's an option. And again, I didn't even know there was. What well, to me, technically, like a, a like a sushi, it's a Japanese taco. <laughs> it's like a variation of it. So that will be a taco that uh, you can go ahead and uh, and again. Some of the very typical Mexican tacos, as far as what they consist of, is al pastor, carnitas, longaniza, cochinita, barbacoa, birria, carne asada, then there's chicken, chile, and then you get into some of my options. Well, mine is the queso, nopal, that's cactus, grasshoppers, that's chapulines. I'll, you know, have you ever uh, had a grasshopper? If you never had, you never lived. I'm just saying this is like a natural French fry. And, of course, you have your avocados. And just about, again, if you can, you get your tortilla, right? And anything that you can think of, you can put it in there, you can. 
And that's pretty much what a taco can be. Of. Again, I know that now we have, especially where we live in, I live in the United States, so we have tacos that, the crunchy tacos. Well, even though the crunchy tacos has been around here for some time, Taco Bell, you know, took the idea and, and took it and make, made it their own. But even before that, there had already, already been talks that even even 10 years prior to that, the taco, crunchy taco, had been a thing. And it was actually a little bit more popular. And the reason why it was more popular is because it, it just lasted a little longer than the soft tortilla, you know. And, and again, we go all the way back to years. And because of Nixtamal that we talked about the tortilla, that's the only reason why you'll be able to. And I did, I did want to go touch back on that tortilla episode because I actually found another date that the Nixtamal process itself was in the 1500 BC, that's before Christ, and it's supposed to be found in Soconusco, Chiapas. That's even further. That's even further than the time that I have given to you. Like it's, it's many years ago that they created this. And to be honest, like supposedly that Cuauhtémoc, you know, used to use the Moctezuma. I'm sorry, used to use the tortilla to scoop up. Which technically, that's what we you wouldn't. If you're a, like for me myself and all the other countries that eat with tortilla a lot of the time we use like the actual tortilla as a utensil and like we, we make a little scoop and that's how we scoop our food and that's how we eat our food and that's the way that we've been eating it so and again there's different stories i i, I went through different websites as far as the taco there's people that have been studying this culture and the tacos for years and supposedly that's you know again those are the stories but this food itself the actual taco there's no doubt that if the tortilla was made years ago, then you already put in something in it. Just because you didn't officially name it a taco, you didn't officially gave it that, and we made it more popular after giving it a particular name, whether it was because of the miners, because of of because of the actual Nahuatl word of the folding, or whatever the case, because of the freaking... the the actual mine, the actual uh, dynamite sticks, whatever the case might be, either way. Once it, be, it took over, then it's, it's all over the place now. Every country has its own version just about, well, not every country, but there's a lot of countries that have their own variation of food because it's easy. It's comforting. It's comforting food. It could be a street food. It could be a fancy taco now. You don't necessarily have to be like, uh, go to the streets and just it'll be it used to be like a, a working class type of of food that you would only find with people that would be like working hard working people uh, re regular not even um, middle class but just working people eating tacos but now it's everywhere like lebron taco tuesday whatever he said i don't even know what he says it, but anyways that's that's part of it it came all into fruition just for the creation of whoever came out with it again and that's where i touch back on the beginning if you know somebody that knows somebody that knows the actual story or how the word or the actual story i don't if you have any documentation or I, i'll take your word on it i'll take your word that if your theo's great grand the auntie literally was the first person that served out tacos and they're the ones that did it please let me know because i want to know the real story i know there's different things but at the end of the day a lot of the times, it's, it's all in the past now, right? It's cool to give credit where credit is due as far as it's a person or whoever the case might be. But the result is the fact that we have a uh, we have tacos to the world. We, we can give tacos to the world that is something that is Latino, that is Mexican. And then that pretty much everybody can enjoy and, and it's nutrition, it's good, it's delicious. You can cater to people that are, you know, carnivores, people that enjoy their meat. It caters to people that enjoy veggies if they want to, or just frijoles. And of course, I'm going to do one, one of these days, I'm going to do a podcast about beans, frijoles. And I will give you very, very, very specific and fun facts in regards to to beans at that time. Because I feel it's a great contribution as far as nutrition to the world. And it comes from the, his, from the, the Latinos. And uh, that's what it is. Now, real quickly. So... There's all kinds of videos on YouTube. You can go ahead and look it up. You can go ahead and do your own research. Uh, as far as Latinos, what's the difference between a Latino? And I know I didn't talk in the intro because it's pretty much 
it's like it's a drag that uh, already video that they done as far as was what narrowed it down latinos it's pretty much everything in south america not necessarily like in the latin americas which is considered mexico all the way down south uh, in every country down and the caribbeans and a hispanic and and then the latinos don't necessarily all of them speak spanish you don't have to speak spanish to be considered latino because brazilians fall on the under the category and a span uh, hispanic is anybody that speaks spanish and that includes spaniards and most of those uh, Hispanic has to do with with the census, so just to narrow it down. I mean, if you want to look, do your own research as far as what it is. It, it gets a little confusing, but at the end of the day, it's just you know, just like we said, we just want to make sure we relate to you. We we let you know how much of 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 a human we really are. We just got our own way of doing things, you know. Like if you're if you're Irish, you might not agree with certain things that Scottish people do or English people do, you know, but that doesn't mean that you're not all Europeans and our people. The same thing with with any any other culture. Just because you feel like they do certain things different, that doesn't mean that it's not the way that they do things. Like even the, even the Spaniards, when they came in and they took the corn back to Spain, the nixtamal process that they could have used to help them because they were having uh I, I believe it's some kind of disease that that if you eat tortilla is real helpful for you they looked at the natives and they just thought that they cooked funny their thing was even though they saw them as people and of course they were a little bit more to them less educated and savage but the way they were cooking stuff it just looked funny to them but if they would have taken that knowledge back to where they were at that time in, in spain they would have saved a lot of lives because the nixtamal process itself, uh, I don't recall exactly what it is, but it, it fights some kind of, uh, it helps with some kind of disease that a lot of people were suffering to, that by eating just the tortillas and doing the process of eating that would have saved their lives. So I do want to, just because people do things different, cook different and things like that doesn't mean that they don't know the technology behind it, right? They don't. They don't understand what it does because somehow they figure that doing this you could create this. And then again, and that comes. And, and our theme is not going to be always about tacos and things, but it so happened to be that we did tortillas last time, and then now we're going to do tacos because out of that came tacos. Years later, after the tortilla, and then now it just became a, a global phenomenon, which a lot of countries have their own taco style, and it's not just a food that you can buy in the streets. If you want to, you can, but then there's also the fancy, expensive tacos that you can have at other places, and it's a beautiful thing. Again, so the final thought on that one is that, I mean, again, just because somebody does something different, just because you don't understand the way they're doing things, just because they do it a little bit different than you, it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that they don't know what they're doing or it just because it's funny to you you can't be open minded to try to try it out and see what they're all about because you might find yourself being you know improving your your even your health maybe something that they're doing can improve your health and you could be better off because of what they're doing you know so let's be open minded to certain things just because it looks funny to you because your family and everybody that you know around is not accustomed to this. I mean, it's not necessarily right for them. And it could be even right for you if you just open your mind to see that they're just people like you. But just do certain things just a little bit different. Again, this is the Global Land Factor. We record off Fishbowl Radio Network in Arlington, Texas. For more information in regards to them, you can go to fbrn.us. Get all the details regarding all the great shows that they have available. And remember, we are just the spice to this global melting pot that it is the world. We are here to participate. One love. We are the Global Latin Factor. To the next episode. <laughs>